Okay, so I'm going to remodel the 2D problem we're looking at. So, first of all, you start by creating a part, so I double click on the part. And since it's a 2D element we're looking at, uh, I choose 2D plane as deformable, I choose wire. Approximate size 3 will be located in the total length is like 2 meters, so I click continue. Then I click this and start creating. Element. So there are two of them. So once I'm done creating an element, then I apply dimensions to them. So the report supposed to be one meter. So I set that to one meter. I set this element to, to one meter. So once I'm done with that, then I'm done with the part. I can go ahead, then exit out of it. So I've created two parts. This part, that part. I then create a material to be applied and since we're dealing with uh, two separate materials I create them separately so I have the steel material I go to mechanical elasticity elastic and set the young small dose which is 200 exponent 6 km 200 km per meter squared also we should 0.3 so I'm done with that steel I'll click again, then I create the aluminum. Okay, mechanical elastic. Create the Young's modulus for that one is 70 exponent uh, 6. So I think it's okay. I think that part of the name is a bit different, but it doesn't make a bit of sense, it doesn't. Really, it's never it's actually much used in computation, so I can click OK. So, once I'm done creating the materials, I can go ahead and create section. So, the first section will be the steel section, it's a truss section. So, on the beam, you will see truss. Click continue. You select the material steel, then give the cross section. And the cross section is 400, it's going to be 6 meters squared. So, that's for section double click to the second section I name it aluminium section section it's also truss I click continue I choose the aluminium material the cross section this time around is 200 is going to negative 6 so I'm done the section then I expand the part choose part 1 then section assignment so I assign the sections there so I select the first section, then I apply the steel section to it. I select the second element, apply the aluminum section to it. So I'm done with that, so I can go ahead and click on done. So once I'm done, I can then go ahead and I've created my parts, I've created my section, my material sections, so assigned the section, so I can go ahead and then create a Assemble so I have to assemble all this stiffness matrix and all. I have that specific which and you don't really see anything but internally the program does that for you. So double click on the instances, it selects the entire parts, so click OK. It's kind of done internal stuff for you, so you forget about that thing. But once you're done, we have to then create a step where we're going to apply the load. There's a, a, originally an initial step that's where the boundary conditions will be applied. I start in nice and an extra step for the load application. So I will click on this and I create the load application step. For linear analysis, it's best to choose linear permutation, static linear permutation, and click continue. Then we okay. So if we have that step in place. So the next thing you're going to do is then apply your boundary conditions. So I double click. Uh, it's supposed to be applied in initial stage. I select it. it's a displacement. We can first we'll click on continue. We select the node where the restraint is supposed to be. Click on that and strain the vertical and horizontal to make it stable. Okay. okay. So the boundary conditions, the boundaries apply. So then we are left to the application on the other side. Double click on node application and choose it. Application step I just created. 
it's a crucial turn for force I can continue and click this. It's uh, 20 km force I can uh, in the negative direction, so I make it negative 20 km. So I need to turn to okay. So now what I'm left with is actually a mesh. So I go back and the parts I see mesh is 17. I double click on it, then I can go ahead and then see it. Go to see part. What I see that does is I actually create nodes if you should be to put it away inside the element so I can pick it. Excuse me, so to feel variables and interesting. It actually breaks this element to about 10 parts approximately. But since we just look at an order of values, I'm just going to set this to 1, which is quite a length of the element. I see that it's actually selected and put so I can read this placement I click OK and I go back to I go to mesh then I go to element type I select the entire element I click down I go down what you stress OK since it's a by specialized stresses then I'm done so once it's done then I actually go back to mesh part Okay to mesh, yes. So now it's done the mesh and everything. So I can go ahead and then create a job for analysis. So I double click on job, create select some model, I click continue the job is created. So with a job which is created, I can right click on it, go to data check to check whether the data everything is okay. So click OK. You see it's gonna be a data so check submitted. You can see check running. And hopefully if everything is working we see check completed. If there's an error you're going to see an abort message. But since it's completed we're okay. We can go ahead and then submit for analysis. So it's going to speed and submit that. It's going to run hopefully once you see completed error results are so I can go ahead, right click on this, go to results and so this is the on display ship when I click on this you see the load has actually formed it so visually you know that at least you get a result so if you come here we can actually get primary can get stresses so this is our stress distribution for the structure actually broken down nicely there for us so uh, you can't really see it so you go to view portal view portal rotation option is legend set font set it to say 40 apply ok so now we see our displacements our stresses and how they vary you can also monitor the displacement a similar fashion I mean, you choose the y direction so there are no displacements there. In the y direction, you get the displacement nice. Our manual computation is also verified. So, we kind of have a feel of what is actually happening here. So, so that's literally about it. But you can go ahead and then generate a report which you're going to view your results in. So, you can go to report, fill the output data. Then when you go to setup, that is actually going to you where your file is going to be seen. You're just going to browse and see with the desktop so you can have a look at what is there. So we use a Dino desktop. Okay, so I'm going to choose which variables I'm going to be showing and choose my displacement stress cycle. Element I choose unique node in the displacement. I choose to see the displacement in the file. The stress is the S11 shows the stress in the number. I can go ahead and also choose reaction process and just click on apply. And these values are actually printed into the file. So I can go to my desktop, I see an upper course file. I open with notepad and voila we have our results so looking at our results we see that let me go quickly back and show you something here we can actually turn on the notes 
element so I can click on this labels show element labels show element notes just to show the notes apply so you see we have node one node two node three element one element two for node one node two they attach element one so if I come back to the results that are generated I can see that node one node two for the element two you see for that's why the boundary condition is applied. We are getting minus 20, expand negative 36, which is almost zero. Then we are getting displacement at node 2. Then this is the stress 50 kilonewton per meter squared minus in the element. We go back to element 2, which is node 2 and 3. So the displacement here and node 2 is the same as displacement in node 2 and node 2. Then we get it. Displacement, we get the stress in the number. So basically, those are the values you're looking for. Okay, so that wraps up the video. Hope it's useful.